Hi everyone, I'm Rick Zanotti, and this is another book to grow with. It could also be a movie to grow with too, because a lot of these have movies attached to them. This book, Lost Horizon. This was one of those books, when I was a kid, I first saw it probably in the, uh, I don't know, a long time ago. But this movie, the movie was uh, actually made in 1937, the original, with Ronald Coleman. That was a long time ago. And yet, it was a pretty cool movie. Um, they redid it, and I think in 1973, it was rated one of the worst movies ever made. I think it's in the top 50 worst movies. That's not a good thing. I enjoyed it because I liked the story, but the singing, and it was a musical. It was, it was pretty awful. Anyway, let's go back to the original movie, but more so the book. Lost Horizon, written by James Hilton, is a movie about maybe destiny, maybe how things happen that can change one's life and what you do with that one thing. Now, this is um, a fiction movie. It's not real, or is it? We don't know. It could be real somewhere. But it's about an industrialist who winds up getting kidnapped on his way to heading back home because there was a revolution going on, I think, in China at the time. And they get out, and they actually get kidnapped. And he winds up in a place called Shangri-La. Now, you may or may not have heard of Shangri-La, but that was considered a beautiful city, the, a wonderful city, a magical city. Shangri-La. They didn't have bad weather. They didn't have storms. They had great people, kind people. They were led by a priest who was very old. But I'm not going to give too much away because this is one of those books and movies that really probably would enjoy reading if, if you got into it. I actually like the movie better than the book in this case. Usually I don't, but in this case I do, especially the Ronald Coleman movie. It was very well done. field at Moscow, China, starts the greatest news story since the World War. Here Robert Conway, Great Britain's strong man of the East, soldier, diplomat, and man of destiny, soon to become Prime Minister of 400 million people, superintends the rescue of British subjects from a city torn by civil war. Fighting back the panic-stricken natives, Conway with three other men and a woman, escape in the last plane and fly away into the unknown to disappear from the face of the earth. And I also like those classic movies. There's a certain something about the black and white and the look of it. And it was it was pretty a neat movie. I think it's been colorized now. I'm not sure. Um, I think I have one or two copies of it at home. But this movie is all about a journey. How that journey takes you to a different journey. And what you do with that journey. The decisions you make. The choices you take. All changes who and what you are or want to be. And in this movie, the main character, played by Ronald Coleman, the events never bothered him. Somehow, when he got to Shangri-La, he felt he belonged there his whole life. And he maybe he did. Something happened to take him there. And when he got there, he was thrilled. His younger brother was not. He wanted out, and in a big way. And so did one of the women in Shangri-La, I think it was Olivia Hussey, who played the role, falls in love with him, but really not. She wants out. But the problem is, if you leave Shangri-La, not, not many good things can happen to you. But again, I won't really ruin that for you. It's a great movie. It, it really is an interesting movie. And it's a good book, too. They are slightly different. That happens a lot when screenplays get rewritten to, to make it flow better in a movie type uh, scenario it is 
a very interesting uh, movie and the book as well. To me, the movie was more cohesive. Isn't that interesting? Usually books are more cohesive, but to each his own. The book is also excellent. It's one of those books about just journeys, very similar in some ways to the book we reviewed earlier, which was The Razor's Edge, very similar kinds of movies. This one not having the the um, oh, soap opera part of it that was in The Razor's Edge at one point. This is much more of the adventure this man goes on and how he finds what he's looking for. Wouldn't it be great if we could all find what we're looking for when you're looking for it? Or even, yet, yeah, usually it happens when you're not looking for it. But in this case, he was not looking for it, and yet there he was, resonating with the whole situation. It's a great, great book, great movie. The second movie, if you're a diehard of the book like I was, or of, of the movie like I was, it's okay. It's painful to hear because it's really lousy as far as the singing goes and all that. But, but the story is about the same. And the sets were newer now. It was done, what, 60 years later almost. Uh, big difference. But anyway, enjoy it. If you like it, there's links below. You can get a copy of it, either the book or the movies. Um, it, it's a fun two, three hours of, of watching a movie or uh, a pretty pretty good book that doesn't take long to read. It's a good, it's a good read. I'm Rick Zanotti. Hope you enjoyed that. And give us some comments if you like the book or movie and what you thought about it. Thanks.